Hello everyone and welcome to Gorge where we have French versus Byzantine. We have Blade playing as French and Starflark playing as Byzantine. So let's go ahead and take Fog of War off real quick and just check out how each player is getting the start of their game going. Looks like French is opting for one scout, one scout start. Byzantine. Starflark is going for the cistern and it, it looks like he's also going for just one scout. This is a map where multiple scouts could be a viable opening where you can go to each side of the gorge um, and get extra, extra sheep potentially. But both players, like I said, opting for just the one scout. So this is on the new patch that came out uh, January 30th, I believe. So Byzantine got a little bit of a buff. You can see here now the first cistern is boosting gather rate by 10%. So that is quite a bit. And they start off with, with enough stone to make it right from the beginning and already have... 74 stone additionally from building that building a house and a mining camp so it'll be interesting to see whether starflark goes for a another early cistern or saves a stone for an early second tc we'll have to see how what he opts for there and a blade as many of you probably are familiar with he is a na player i believe north american player I believe he's from Can. No, he is from the U.S. If I'm, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's been away from the game for a little bit, just recently coming back. So we'll see how in shape he is. Uh, I'm not going to be super uh, critical or putting high expectations on him in this, in this game, though he is a really good player and probably I would say top 50 uh, when he's, when he's active. So this should be a very, very good game. I think civilization-wise, I would have to give the the edge to Byzantine, as French seems like almost always one of the tougher civs to win with, um, with their strength being knights, early knights, and outside of that, just having a hard time um, transitioning to a different unit composition, and their bonuses aren't so great, so if you can defend the early knight raids, you're in a pretty good position against them. So he is going to School of Cavalry with four villagers. <clears throat> Looks like he'll opt for an early wheelbarrow as well. He's scouting the edges of the map here. Finds one of the boars. Um, I don't think he's going to go for a boar play, though that is sometimes viable. And then we're, we look over to Starflark. He is going Grand Winery, which has been boosted in this patch. It is now an well, I don't know, it may, it may have always been defined as an economic and religious landmark, but it definitely is an economic one now because it acts as a mill now uh, instead of just a monastery. Well, you could drop off food at it before. It was kind of like in the in the middle. It didn't seem like it was a little bit confused. They didn't really decide what they wanted on it, but uh, now you can get all the mill upgrades there, <clears throat> as well as make uh, monks from there. So in H three. So it's really strong, and 60% additional, it says, nearby villagers gather plus 60% olive oil from berry bushes and olive groves. Uh, relics garrison generate olive oil instead of gold. So, so I believe villagers typically gather 20% olive oil per food. So with this, I believe it's it would get 80%? Yeah, it's either way. You can, they, you can really spam mercs in the mid mid to late game with that when you put your your olive groves around it. So it does look like it does look like Starflux going for an early second town center. He has more than enough stone. Maybe he's going to go second cistern and then and then second TC because <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's going towards four hundred fifty stone right now. <laughs> Not sure if he miscalculated something here. We'll we'll have to we'll have to see. But the first night is out for Blade at around four minutes forty-five seconds. He does have wheelbarrow already in. And he's going for a second TC as well. Run 
so we should have quite a bit of a boomy game. And I think, let's take a look. It looks like, yeah, Blade is going just for the single single knight for now. He's got just a few villagers on food to keep the villager production going, which he actually doesn't even have barely enough for. And he's got an idle TC right now. But he does get, looks like he got a villager kill here. Yep, definitely didn't damage another one. So that's a nice, easy kill. Missed that, but... Um, so he's going to be ahead of villagers just slightly because he, he had some idle TC time, but he did kill one. Um, but Starflark getting that second town center up very, very early, f before 5 minutes and 45 seconds. And it's right on the Grand Winery. That's uh, not the best placement. It's cutting off a lot of potential Olive Grove area with these two TCs right around it, but... I guess he wanted to just keep, make sure he keeps the villagers safe there, gathering. So now he's going to drop the second cistern. Maybe he just wanted to have enough stone safely for the second TC and probably three cisterns, honestly, because now he's got um, 164 stone in the bank. And Blade is moving out. He is moving out towards that boar over here and Relic for his second TC. And um, he's searching for more villager kills. Probably not going to find any now that that gold mine is exposed. And I think Starflark's going to have to make probably a barracks and a few spearmen to protect that if Blade's on top of it trying to deny that gold gathering for it to age up. So we'll see what happens with that. Let's see if he's, I thought, he's dropping a mercenary house. Currently has 400 olive oil, so he can get that contract going and the first batch of units out. Probably by the time uh, this is, at least by the time this is finished and that contract's researched. And there's the tower, so that, okay, so he's gonna find the time. Oh, oh, he's, Blade's busy getting the, the boar right now, pulling it a little bit closer to the CC, so he's not going to grab a villager with this, though he could have, but not a huge deal. So Blade's got a bunch of food over here with all these berry bushes and the boar, and he's got a archery range on the way. And, and so Byzantine is adding a barracks as well, so I'm guessing, oh, he actually went Keshik. I was thinking he was going to go Longbow and Spearman composition but no no he's going keshik got that tower for a good line of sight here that is a massive line of sight that's a that's wild <clears throat> excuse me wow I, that is i mean it almost looks like he's looking downhill but there's definitely no way that's downhill anyway Making a few lemon. I'm just gonna call them spearmen because I'm not good at pronounce pronounce pronunciation of these units. So I'm not gonna try and stumble over that. I'll just call them spearmen. That's what they. That's the purpose they serve. So, oh, you know what? Maybe no, I was gonna say maybe he had the house upgrade, border border settlements, but he doesn't even have that, and he doesn't have a house over there. So that's just that's just blowing my mind right now. Anyway. Another villager drops on the front line to that knight. <clears throat> yeah, maybe he needs a tower there as well. He's starting to add in the olive groves. And there's that tower. Uh, oh, man. He's, he's really uh, getting, getting some lost uh, villager gathering here. Blade getting quite effective idle time with that one knight. And... Although Blade did kill two villagers, he was quite a, a bit behind in that second TC, so he is just barely now catching up in villagers, even though he does have the French bonus to make villagers faster. They're made in 17 seconds for French in H2. Does pick up a third villager. And there's the blacksmith. I'm curious. Okay, double archery range. He's putting a tower outpost on his gold. So he just wants to secure up some uh, some of his resources at a little wall here. That's always a nice idea. 
to delay any attacks, any raids. Especially on a map like this where it's kind of naturally divided into two sides and it's not too difficult to add, add a little bit of a wall. Okay, so Blade is aging up now. He is still making archers, but I'm assuming he's going to switch into some uh, arbs, some crossbows, once he gets up. And we'll see how he rounds out his composition. He might just go pure arbs. We'll have to see. And meanwhile, Starflark, uh, his resource balance is not quite there. He is adding a lot of olive groves. And he's at 160, 70-ish. Well, it's coming in pretty quick. But uh, it's still, it takes quite a while to really get those, those units out from the mercenary house. He is going for a raid here. I want to see... Uh, does they drop off more, or they just gather it? Hmm. Uh, I'm a little bit confused how how that how that works. Maybe it's when they drop it off. Plus six. Uh, well, we'll we'll have to find that out another time. Meanwhile, we do have a little bit of a raid, just some idle villager time. No. Oh, well, he did get a kill. I'm not sure if it was here or yeah, it must have been here. But uh, lost his scout in the in the make in the process of that. So Starflark reaction reacting to the age up of Blade, and it looks like he's going to be staying in age two for a while here. He's starting to really push with the horseman and spearman composition, and I think this is a really good composition at this point in time. We're going to take fog of war off to get a full eye view of this bird's eye view. And there's just not enough units right now for Blade, so this could be a really difficult hold. He is making arbs. Uh, he does have a few knights here to kind of fend off the horsemen, but losing some on the front line to the spearmen and Keshik as well. And there's it's beginning to be a significant villager gap. I think Blade is just not making villagers. He might not even be using this. He, okay, he is using the second TC, but I think he's just trying to squeeze out some units to hold right now. So even though he has the TC or the French bonus of making villagers faster, and they're even on t on town sound on town centers, he is significantly behind in the economy right now, and he's uh, he's making valuable units, but <laughs> this crossman is is going to survive running right alongside the. The Byzantine uh, army, but I, I think at this point Blade has held. So he has a monastery. He's going to start picking up some relics as soon as he has the gold for that. But he was being pushed off that gold mine, so that is slowing him down in many regards. He currently has the guild hall on food. It's a pretty good uh, choice in the mid, early to mid. Uh, castle age just so french don't have a tough time transitioning to farms but at some point relatively <coughs> excuse me relatively soon you're gonna want to switch that over to golden he actually already has he just probably forgot for the first few seconds upon aging up so a nice little raid here should get at least two of these probably yeah, he's gonna get all three of these villagers So Starflark had the same idea to start walling up just a little bit later, a little bit behind on that timing, and he's gonna—it's gonna cost him. Wow, another two villagers here, and then all this idle time from the wood gathering villagers, and another loss, probably a, and another one. Wow, so really catching up in economy with this this three night raid, and he doesn't—if you look at the fog of war, he doesn't have a lot of line of sight. He's just choosing the right areas to go to he knows that there's berries over here you know the wood line is always a pretty decent spot to raid <laughs> he's getting a crazy value for these knights hopefully he doesn't lose them all to the spearmen here he's not going to be healing up he doesn't have chivalry so any any bit of damage is going to be a long-term impact and uh unless he does choose to get that upgrade but we do also have starflark luring uh or, or just uh, roaming on the bottom side of the map. He's going to probably get... Maybe just... Well, no, he, he opts to just go for the, the houses that were in construction. Doesn't get any villagers. So, good pull by Blade. 
And another archer range. That's three now for Blade. He's trying to wall off the, the right side as well, the east side. Chasing away the horseman and uh, Keshik with a few spearmen. Finally, he gets his first monk out with the relic that was sitting right next to that monastery for quite a while. And he's pushing with some age 2 composition. Hardened spearmen? Some arbs are in there, but uh, some baseline archers. <clears throat> and of course, the, f the, the three knight raid. Another two villagers going down. And we're finally starting to see French take uh, economic advantage while Starflark is trying to age up. This is going to be a tough timing now where Blade has the, uh, the army mass, the advantage. And Byzantine is trying to hold while aging. This is going to really delay him with this push here. But there are quite a few spearmen that could go on shield wall and really take some damage. But he needs to get this, the rest of his army over here. Uh, but he'll get up. He'll get up safely. He's gonna lose some villagers though, and now it's uh, He only loses a couple there But throughout the game he's lost 14 more villagers, so that's gonna start to really be felt In the mid game here, but there are a lot of old olive groves. Let's see how many we got right now we got, Well, just nine. He'll start transitioning to make some more um, but that is going to translate into some more uh, essentially free-ish units. He's got a thousand olive oil right now. He'll probably get the veteran contract pretty soon. And I would start uh, assuming he's going to be making gulams at that point. <clears throat> and Blade is starting to make a pretty substantial tr uh, transition into farms. He doesn't really need to quite yet. There are some berries right by his town center. There's a hunt over here, another one down below, another another patch of berries. But it's not a bad idea to start that transition a little bit earlier as French, just so you don't get caught by surprise and, and have to suddenly drop like 30 farms and have basically no food income for a while. So he's starting to also get some economic upgrades. We got horticulture coming in, uh, lumber preservation, uh, no, he's just got the first tier on that one. So, they're both pretty even in economic text, though. Compositionally, Spearman, Archer... ...for Byzantine. And let's see how many relics. We got two relics... ...for Blade. He Oh, he just lost his monk right here, so he doesn't have one right now. I think he has one in... Uh, I think he... Had one. Yeah, he's got one on the way, though. They're both fighting over this relic right now, so that's going to be his center of attention. Maybe the uh, maybe Byzantine picks up this one up here for their first relic. We'll see. But here we go. We got a fight in the middle of the map. Pavis coming in for the Arbs. And that is quite a mass of infantry for Byzantine. This is going to be a tough fight for Blade. I think he needs to get out of here. There's just so much... So much uh, spearmen, so much front line. The arms are very strong units, but that that is a lot of health on the front line. It is important to note that the shield wall tech has been nerfed, and it's it is uh, only in relation to range damage. So the spearmen of blade of blade spearmen were doing full damage to those. Uh, Lem, lim, ta, I can't even. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to Google the pronunciation on that. Um, but they were taking full damage and not do, and doing half damage. So, or not half damage, but minus 25% attack speed. Regardless, this fight's actually going pretty well for Blade. He does uh, look to have some decent upgrades. He has an upgrade advantage for the for his archers. Seven melee armor already. And uh, versus archers, typically you don't want to make crossbowmen, but uh, these these arbs are very strong. Here comes another monk. Should get sniped, and he does. This thing has been picked up so many times, and I don't think anyone has taken a single. I don't think either monk has taken a single step away from there. Okay, so let's take a an assessment of the economic situations. We got some more olive groves coming in. That's twenty for the Byzantine player. So they're getting 200, almost 300 
olive oil per minute and that's pretty substantial You're getting close to basically getting a, a, a set of keshek for free every minute while, while also having the golden horn tower which also has been nerfed i believe it only gives two keshek now instead of three so again some skirmishes at the mid map blade is adding in some men in arms take a look still only has the two relics there's three more on the map one safe for each player and then they're fighting over the, the one in the middle still all right so blade setting up again setting up more farms he's, he's got a, a keep on his back gold mine it is an 8000 8k gold mine so that is important to secure a little bit of a strange spot to put that but um, maybe he intends to add a market line towards that towards that direction. We'll, we'll have to see. But it's never a bad idea to just secure secure your 8k gold mine. <laughs> Blade is pushing in. However, there's a Mangadellon placement coming in for Byzantine. So that will definitely help him hold here. I don't expect a sustained push from Blade with that tech coming in. And uh, his army and Blade's army ma mainly being crossbowmen. I think he really needs to back up here. Ooh, that's a pretty sizable shot there. And another one coming in. Yeah, that's that is uh, that's get out time. Blade's trying to have a few nice run around and get some raids in. And it looks like he might be successful with that. He's probably heading over to this gold mine. Doesn't have the line of sight to see the villagers on the berries. Oh, and then there's another keep. So he he, he does put it around his archer ranges and a stable. So he's going to get a nice influence from here. Bring his knight cost down to 112 food, 80 gold. He can upgrade. Once he gets imperial, he'll have a, a, the tech reduce their cost another 5%. And their crossbow, 64 food, 32 gold. That is so, so significant. I mean, it's, it's a massive, massive boost. It's just a reminder that when you're... When you're Playing French, you have to have a keep around you. You, it's what is the what is the? It's a twenty percent reduced cost. That's basically that's directly related to your economy. That's basically twenty percent boost to your economy. Not entirely because you're using you, you're spending the resources on other things, but um, that is very significant boost to have. And so we got more walls coming in. Looks like. Starflark did finally grab his first relic. Where 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 are we with this monastery? Come on. Come on. Oh, did he just Okay, he put it in for additional olive oil at the Grand Winery. And wow, look at this. Yeah, so Blades aiming to get very aggressive inching towards the gold of the Byzantine player, sending out some villagers here. And we'll see if that actually does get up. So, French is ahead in the armory department, in the blacksmith department. So he does have he does have more units. He has a few knights, and he's got a treb. Oh, he's got all types of siege coming on the way. So I'd say he's at a at a nice advantage here. It's going to be tough to push the outpost with the Ming and Ellen placement, but that treb is super key. Should really take that out pretty quick. This keep does look like it's going to get up, even though there is a wolf trying to stop that. A minging out from each player. So we'll see how this progresses. There is a spring old from French as well. So French now oh, almost over 20 villagers ahead in the economy. So really it's a signi significant amount at this point. W parking one night on this gold mine is a really nice idea. I like that. Because sometimes you'll you'll send uh, oh my gosh and the keep oh was not noticed by by the Byzantine player for quite a while loses another few villagers here he lost 28 in the game at this point but we're starting to see a bunch of siege pack up and there's so many changes to siege in this patch I haven't seen how it plays out yet so we'll, we'll have to we'll find out now so Manganels. Um, they haven't really changed other than the fact that they will last longer against Springolds. You'll need more Springolds to one-shot a Manganel. 
So minging owls should have a bigger impact on fights as a Oh my gosh, that's a huge, huge volley from that minging owl. And he probably will get another one here too. Oh, that is just brutal. Blade is pushing in. He's attacking with keeps. Puts one up on the big gold mine for the Byzantine player while he's pushing. And snipes the Ming and Els. So now we're just spring olds. And Blade's doing a really good job with the micro here. Oh, another Ming and Els shot. Another massive one. Look at this. Wow, let's take a let's take a look without the UI here. And Blade is just pushing in. He's got all types of siege. He's really forcing Byzantines defenses here i don't know if he's going to be able to hold so many arbs and another manganel oh it's going to get some good value wow wow that is he i don't think i don't think blade sees it maybe he just now noticed but yeah wow okay some some good trades from both sides with the manganels um but it looks like this town center is going to go down pretty soon and there's just not much left for the byzantine player not sure how much longer he's going to be able to hold on here. He does, He's now switching over to the gold mine on the right side where that knight was waiting. Perfectly planned. Blade has done a really good execution on this on this push on the gold mines. And it's really hurting Starflark. He does still have some resources in bank, but not for long. That gold is, is really... I don't think he has any of it coming in right now. He was gathering some, but now he's retreating from that knight. I think this is looking... This is looking pretty over. I don't really know what you what you could feel like you can do at this point as a Byzantine player. You've lost your town center. You're not gathering any gold, um, and you have siege knocking on your door. It's it's not looking good. Just <laughs> rushing up the keeps on the left side of the map, and he okay. Wow, that's actually a very smart, very smart move. Using the villager defense ability to take out that knight, building a quick cistern to do it. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, if he can secure that side of the map and he can secure it quickly, he's going to send a whole bunch of villagers over. Well, it looks like maybe just for a lumber, but if he can secure that, he does have a decent wall that kind of guides, that makes it difficult for French to get over there. But um, I expect Blade, okay, here it is. Wow, look at, okay, first, take a look at how much food, he must have, he must have just pulled out the gold from there, but look at the resources here, that early farm transition resulted in 4k food in the bank, and not, while he's aging up, so, uh, Blade knows he's ahead, he knows he's just about to finish him off, and, and this is a really great finishing move for the French. Is just dropping that red palace right in front of your opponent's base. Doesn't even need to deny this gold mine over here. Although he's going to attempt to. I'm not sure what villagers are going or test that. As, oh, it must be these guys. But they don't know that there's a wall here, so they're going to take the long way around. But here we do. We have the what, maybe the last fight. There's, there's a lot of units, infantry, for Byzantine compared to Blade, but this one, Manganel, it might just be enough to just hold himself. Spearmen are, are running it running it down, and they probably will get it, but uh, they're going to have a lot of losses in the, in the process of that. So this, I don't see how, how Starflark can hold on from here. I think this is going to be the nail in the coffin when he sees this age up, if he didn't already see it. And Blade... Canceling the keep on the bottom and the, putting another one in the main base of the Byzantine player. And that's going to be it. GG. And uh, wow, that was that was a pretty impressive keep push for the Byzant uh, for, for Blade on the Byzantine player. And um, yeah, that's let's take a look at some of the graphs real quick. Villager count was pretty even until Blade had some, some really nice night raids roaming around the back of the base. And got his uh, economy really going. Got a few extra relics. Military count. Pretty close the whole game. Blade, I think, secured it mostly with some Manganel Micro. And uh, early Springles to take out the Byzantine Manganel. So, very, very nicely done. We'll take one more look at the, at the statistics for the economy. Not too far off in food. Um, 
the gold probably from the relics and and honestly most of it that difference is because he cut off the gold for like the last two minutes of the game so um and look at that olive oil i mean if if starflark was able to stabilize a little bit and just hold on a little bit longer maybe secure one of those gold mines he, he could have really started uh have a nice push back because that's all you get so many basically free units with that olive oil thanks for watching please like and subscribe and if you enjoyed the game please leave a comment see you guys in the next one